SeaWorld Orlando is to the Central Florida theme parks as Chris Bosch was to the Miami Heat. SeaWorld Orlando is a very good park, just like Chris Bosch was a very good basketball player. Chris Bosch just wasn't on the level of his teammates in LeBron James or Dwayne Wade. That's similar to SeaWorld Orlando, how it just can't match Walt Disney World or Islands of Adventure at Universal. The park has a top-heavy ride lineup. SeaWorld recently opened their sixth roller coaster and icebreaker, which joins a trio of B&Ms and a top-notch water coaster. There aren't too many other rides here, but there are some others worth a spin. So in this video, I will rank the top 10 rides and attractions at SeaWorld Orlando. This list will not include any of the animal exhibits, because it's really tricky to compare them with a ride. I also will not be including any of the animal shows. I enjoyed the older ones like Pets Ahoy and Sea Lion High, but the newer ones are a lot less exciting for me. Unless otherwise noted, the attractions on this list are at the main SeaWorld Park. This list will include a few water slides at the adjacent Aquatica Water Park though. This may be a separate admission ticket, but it is included with most annual passes and it's just a two minute drive away across the street. Starting off this list at number 10 is the Sky Tower. This 400 foot or 122 meter tall observation tower is the park's icon. You can see it from anywhere in the park and from miles away. It isn't open often nowadays, but it features a stunning 360 degree panoramic view of the park and the surrounding area because Florida is flatter than an accountant's behind. Number 9, Care Care Curl at Aquatica. This raft slide is a great drop giving a pinch of air time, followed by a giant wave with some solid weightlessness. This slide may be basic, but it's still quite fun. Number 8, Ray Rush at Aquatica. This features a similarly solid drop and wave as the prior attraction, but Ray Rush is a far longer layout. The ride starts with this unique little boost section. It's not too powerful, but it's theatric with all those water jets around you and propelling you forwards. You then have a miniature funnel that slides you around, and then you hit that aforementioned half pipe bit, and after that you return indoors for a dazzling display of lights in the final tube section. This well-rounded ride experience makes it the best raft slide or tube slide at Aquatica, mostly because of its length. Up next would have been Antarctica Empire of the Penguin. This ride has been standing but not operating for nearly two years, and it's unknown if it will reopen, but it was a mixed bag when it operated. This trackless ride system was incredible. The way you'd dance around each room while spinning and rumbling was neat. I always rode in the wild side. The sets and visuals just didn't match the splendor of the ride system though. However, that final reveal of the penguin exhibit after the attraction was breathtaking. You could argue seeing those penguins is more impressive than the ride itself, but I did like the technology behind it. Up next would have been another defunct ride in Wild Arctic. This simulator is another one that may not reopen, but it was a rambunctious experience. It was an older simulator, so the visuals were definitely dated but the plot was well suited to the ride system, and the abundance of motion enhanced the experience for me. This was definitely one of the most turbulent simulators out there. For me, that was a plus. This is also another one that dumps you off in a wonderful animal exhibit at the end, that again may have been better than the ride. Number 7, Journey to Atlantis. The original mock water coaster is a very good attraction. I love the dark ride scenes at the start between the musical score and the physical sets. Then the coaster bits add to the experience as well. The initial drop gives a good pop of air time no matter where you're sitting, and it's very good. The finale is more of a novelty, but it's still pretty quick. The ride is refreshing in most rows, but it's comically drenching up front due to this evil little dip in the middle of the ride. Just look what happens in my POV if you're sitting up front. Number 6, Infinity Falls. This Intamin River Rapids ride is one of the wettest water rides in the world. The rapids alone are almost guaranteed to leave you drenched. Most of them are quite sizable, and there's a sequence where you charge over a few back to back to back. This one also has a neat layout between the rare elevator lift, the largest drop on a rapids ride in the western hemisphere, and all the lush landscaping. Plus that soundtrack just adds to the experience as well. Number 5, Ehu's Breakaway Falls at Aquatica. This tall speed slide complex is comprised of a quartet of slides. You have three of the most intense drop pod slides in the world. Each one starts with a steep sudden plunge with some weightlessness, followed by an intense series of turns. Between the relentless speed, 
crazy sliding and moderate positive Gs, this slide will blow you away. Then the final slide is two strong drops and a similarly fast paced ride experience. These have a claim as the best speed slides in the world. Number 4, Kraken. This B&M floorless coaster was recently repainted, but the ride experience is just as good as ever. The ride has a series of strong inversions, but I particularly love the super whippy 0G roll and the second vertical loop which takes place in a trench. Those trenches in the second half differentiate Kraken from the other floorless coasters. The ride is quite smooth too, making one of the better floorless coasters out there as I talk about in a separate review. Number 3, Manta. This B&M flying coaster is wonderful. The ride balances power and grace well. The first drop is good snap in the back, and then the pretzel loop delivers crushing positive G's in all rows, which is what all the flyers do with this element. The rest of the ride alternates between graceful inversions and fun turns, particularly those in the second half that take place over water or adjacent to rock work. SeaWorld really did a great job placing this ride in the park. Number 2, Icebreaker. This Premier Rides quadruple launch coaster is marketed as a family coaster, but it has some serious power to it. The launches aren't all that impressive, but the second half of the launch sequence is interesting. The stalls on the top hat and beyond vertical spike induce some wonderful weightlessness. Then you also get airtime every time you head over those small humps and they get stronger and stronger each time, particularly in the final pass. Both the top hat and the small bunny hills deliver some very strong ejector airtime, arguably the strongest of any coaster in Orlando. The ride is also super smooth and arguably the sleeper hit of 2022, as I discussed in a separate review. And coming in at number one is Mako. This B&M hyper coaster is one of the best first halves of any coaster. The first drop in every single airtime hill have incredible sustained flejector airtime, particularly that first camelback where it lasts for five seconds. The second half does let his foot off the gas somewhat, but it's still fun and solid. The final bunny hill still gives some floater airtime, and the swooping turns offer some laterals and great visuals. This ride is also glass smooth and super rideable. Plus, that station and musical score around the attraction really get you pumped up for your rides. I have a separate review going into more detail, but this is still one of the best B&M hyper coasters out there, and it's still the king of SeaWorld Orlando. So those are the top 10 rides and attractions at SeaWorld Orlando. What is your favorite ride at the flagship SeaWorld Park? Let me know your thoughts on any of the rides I mentioned, or any you think I missed down in the comments, whether they're at the amusement park or water park. If you enjoyed this countdown, I'd appreciate it if you gave this video a like, and you considered subscribing, because there'll be a lot more roller coaster and amusement park videos here at Canopy Coaster. Thanks for watching.